If you're a child of the 70s, 80s, maybe 90s, and then after that, it just depends on what kind of family and lifestyle you grew up with, uh, you're probably, you've probably seen Top Gun at least once. Very likely a fan. Uh, it's, in many ways, it's an incredible movie. Uh, it's, I mean, looking back on it, and lots has, lots have been, Tom Cruise is, is very tiny, that's true. Uh, going back and looking at Top Gun, there's, there's a lot in that movie to talk about, but it's clearly a love letter to, uh, the Air Force and just American military everything and, uh, yeah, and especially the F-14 Tomcat. Now, there is another movie, like I said, Top Gun Maverick, coming out at some point. And, unfortunately, it looks like they didn't, they don't use Tom, I mean, the F-14 Tomcat isn't in service really anymore. But, uh, I'm sorry, Nerdy Duck, thank you. Na yes, Navy. Yes. <laughs> like I said, I'm very tired this morning. I will make mistakes in what I'm talking about. But yes. Uh, so anyway. Um, but in one of the trailers, like, there was a Tomcat in the trailer, so who knows? There might be some shots, but anyway. But yes, they moved on to the FA-18 Super Hornet, which, again, is a real-world thing that's out there. But, um, oh, Hudson Eyes are interesting. Interesting. Your parents didn't let you watch Top Gun, or Tom Cruise, rather, because of Scientology. You've only ever seen a few good men in Jerry Maguire. Interesting. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, so I was going to say, and Ruiner, as you bring up, that there is there is a long tradition in toys of having toys made of real-life military vehicles, especially airplanes, uh, in, in a variety of toy lines. Some of the most famous would be, we'll, we'll come back to this in just, just a minute, but um, as, as many of us are fans of Robotech, so obviously the the VF-1 Valkyrie or Veritech is based on the Tomcat. Um, not, it's not exactly the same thing, but um, based on that design. But we have seen things like... Let me leave that in frame at some point. What, wasn't, wasn't it floated at some point that Tom Cruise was going to be in Robotech at some degree? Um, so, and we've looked at, at Ring Raiders... A lot before right so they had a mixture of things like the harrier is a real world jet uh of course there's an a10 a10s show up in just about every airplane related toy line uh because they're like the coolest airplane ever and then you'll have a mix of of things with like this thing what does anybody know what this shape of an airplane is called because this shows up in a lot of toy lines i don't know if this thing has a particular name but i i know i had a gi joe plane that looked like this um and i've seen this in in many other I, so yeah like i said i don't know if this if this like shape has a, a name or not but this thing shows up a lot uh, in, I don't have any of them to, to show with me. Oh, okay, Rabbit Wama. That makes sense. This was like a, a like a stealth design, maybe. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because again, I this this shape has been in lots of uh, lots of toys over the years. Um, okay, yeah. So speaking of A tens, uh, that. Famously, has been in Transformers. So, Power Glide was an A10 from way back. This is not the original toy. This is a, a later version. And then we would also get A10s in GI Joe, which then would be filtered back through GI Joe into Transformers. So there's <laughs> another version of the same, well, similar toy, but in the Cobra stylings. Uh, here is a miniature of the G.I. Joe Cobra A-10. Uh, G.I. Joe 
as well was a was a toy line that again had some real world vehicles in it, real world jets, but also fantastical ones. Um, the what was it the I, I, I was never hugely into G.I. Joe. I had a handful of things over the years. So I often can't remember the specifics. But what was the... Um, there was a Tomcat in the G.I. Joe range, right? What was the Sky Striker? Oh, the, was that the, the F-14? Okay, yeah. Yeah, of course. There you go. So what, what, was, the, what was the G.I. Joe jet with the forward pointing wings I, re I really remember that one. okay Sky Striker was the F-14 cool um, oh well, anyway it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter but yeah G.I. Joe had, had a mixture of again real world jets and not so real world jets and there were really cool things in the G.I. Joe line I've talked ad nauseum about repaints and things like that but um, they would repaint vehicles a lot in G.I. Joe. Night Raven? Okay. Yeah, and so, like, every vehicle would get repainted for the other side, and it would go back and forth. Hey, Erdinsk! And everyone who has joined us since I started talking. Uh, so I, I vividly remember when I was a kid, the, the period of time when I was into G.I. Joe is when they were doing the uh, Tiger Force. So they re-released a bunch of vehicles just in Tiger Stripe paint. <laughs> So I had the full size uh, A10 in in the uh, tiger stripe paint, which was awesome. That toy was amazing. It was huge. It had a million uh, things you could put on the hard points underneath. So cool, love that. So we've got A10s and everything. Um, I don't know. I don't actually remember specifically what this toy line is, but we've got like an F16. Oh yeah, Tiger Force was was so good. F fifteen F fifteen Eagles show up in toy lines from now, now and again. Transformers is another one that's had both things. So we've had uh, even going back to the 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 G one stuff. We've had some real world or real world related. Uh, toys as well as obviously things that are more more wacky and crazy um, Parjai says trying to convince my parents I had to, had to have them oh okay. yeah yeah if you had the original versions well I mean look they're they are different sometimes they're for a different team I can see that um, obviously the the more recent Michael Bay Transformers when he tried to do it so that everything Almost everything was based on a real world vehicle. So the the newest Starscream was um, was what is this F twenty two Raptor? Is that what this one is? Something like that. Um, so yeah, pretty much all based on on real world stuff that at least exists in some way. Uh, and then like I said, like like with Tom Top Gun, when you get to toys, there's some toys of movies where they're literally real world things, like in. Independence Day, uh, the first one, they use F-18 Hornets, so there are some toys that are just F-18 Hornets from that movie in toys. Uh, these both came with little mini play sets for Independence Day, sort of like the uh, like the Polly Pocket kind of style where it's a small container and it opens up and there's little things inside to play with. Uh, they've done that for a lot of different toy lines. It's um, like a, a, a standard kind of um, toy scheme, which is great. I love, I always love those things where you open it up and there's a lot of little tiny toys inside. So that brings us all the way back to Top Gun. Oh, Zardoz says that this is Phantom Stealth Fighter. Oh, the one that the one that's in uh, in GI Joe. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I remember because I think my brother had that as a toy, the GI Joe one, and it was yeah, it was like black and silver or something, and I think that toy was huge. 
it was silly. Yeah, and then that and that yeah, I was into GI Joe when they had the there were vehicles that could they were like combiner vehicles. Man, I I have I could couldn't tell you what any of the names were, but they were like sci-fi vehicles that could separate into two parts, I think. Uh, okay, wow. Yeah, I'm... So when I saw this, I got excited. Partly because, again, oh, sorry, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> that's perfect. Uh, I have a friend, a f friend of mine. If you are into GI Joe collectibles, there's also there's a really good website called Yo Joe, I believe is the name of it, and it's a it's a toy database of GI Joe collectibles, and it's run by people that I know. It's a it's a the site is affiliated with uh, Figures.com, so I know all the people there, and they're they <laughs> GI Joe people are very interesting <laughs> interesting people. Um, that's another that's another fandom that is very long suffering because from time to time there's just been a crazy lack of any development and any movement in official products and those people have to be very patient and wait for any crumb of news that something is coming uh but gen generally GI Joe fans I've known have been have been pretty cool uh, so yeah, so it, so I saw this and I was like, okay, so I I've got the nostalgia for Top Gun and Tomcat because it's awesome and again, it's like Robotech. Um, I'm not a huge fan of F18, but it's a, kind of a cool new paint scheme. But then there's this, and again, kind of similar to that. In general, I mean, obviously this one's a little bit more angular, but it has that overall shape. And this, so, again, sorry, spoilers for a movie that may or may not ever actually come out. Um, but yes, this, I mean, if I had to guess, it's some kind of a drone fighter. Uh, maybe there's a plot about phasing out human pilots. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. Don't know anything about it other than the trailers. But yes, there's this weird thing that we've seen in product designs. Hasn't been in a trailer. Hey, maybe it's not even in the movie. Who knows? That's happened before, right? They've made toys of things that don't actually make it into the movie. But let's see what we've got. But I think it's a really cool looking design. And it reminds me of a whole bunch of other things that we'll talk about. Because, oh boy, the sci-fi love automated AI fighter jets. So we've got the 1986. Now, in theory, there are two different versions of this pack. The other one has a... I think the other one, in theory, has two Tomcats and two Hornets. And there's one in like a red color scheme. Uh, there's a little bit of a confusion on Amazon when you order this pack, which one you're going to get. The pictures show both sets, um, but this is the one that came. This is the one that I wanted, so it was it was all good for me. Now these are... They're plastic, but they've got a little bit of weight to them. Obviously, we've got the classic Tomcat shape. The wings are not movable. I wasn't sure if they did or not, but that's fine. I don't think anything actually moves. It does have landing gear rolling wheels. The cool thing about these is that they actually, for relatively cheap toys, They did some really good graphics. We've got a lot of tampo graphics. 
And if you look really closely, let's see if I can, it does say Iceman right underneath the cockpit. Trust me, it does say that. I don't know. And Iceman number 104. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I wasn't sure. I had a sneaking suspicion when I saw the packages. Like, mm, those wings don't look like they actually move. And they don't. But what are you going to do? I assume all of the markings are accurate. I, I don't remember enough to know, but I assume they are. So that's 104 Iceman. This one is the same toy. Actually, the color is a little bit different. It's a little darker. And it's 114 and it does say Maverick on the side there. You can see that. So we get the iconic two Tomcats from the first movie. Uh, no, no markings here, which is odd. I don't like I said. I'd have to go back and rewatch the movie to know exactly what they looked like. Um, in general, they are, like I said, they're they're plastic, but they're they're not super flimsy, which is nice. They're cool enough. Tomcat was such a cool design. <laughs> I've seen a couple of them in real life in uh, like museums and airplane places uh, they're massive they're huge huge aircraft apparently and apparently our the US military had a design for like a next generation they were gonna make a super Tomcat and keep keep it going and there's there's crazy articles about it online you can research but um, yeah just very cool All right, we've got the Hornet. Um, again, theoretically, there's stuff on here from the new movie. Who knows? There are words underneath. There's, They're very tiny. There's no way we're going to get that on camera. Let's see if I can see what it says. Oh, I should have gotten a magnifying glass. Yeah, I can't read that. <laughs> it's too tiny for me. I assume it says, you know, hold on, where is, where is my magnifying glass? So for fine detail work on my miniature painting, I do have one of these. It does come in handy, especially, uh, especially as you get older. Okay, it looks like it says Captain Pete Mitchell Maverick. In very, very tiny letters. Whew, okay. <laughs> All right, and then, and again, uh, landing gear, rolling wheels. Uh, I always prefer it if the landing gear can fold in or it's removable. Just because I, I, I talked about this recently. Because when I fly it around, I want the landing gear on there. What are you going to do? Uh, I have been known in the past to cut landing gear off of toys that where the, it's not removable. So the Dark Star comes with a little base, which is interesting. Let's take a look at this thing. So seeing this reminds me of of a lot of things. Ooh, it even says Dark Star on the bottom. Matchbox 2019. Hmm. It's got a little notch for the base. That's pretty cool. So anyway, anything's removable if you try hard enough. True. True. 
it's a cool design. I, I, I can dig it. All right, so what is what sci-fi fans does this remind you of? Because it reminds me of a couple of specific things. Does it come with unknown Soviet block makes? Sadly, sadly, no. <laughs> Ruiner, not in this set. Uh, I should say that that there there is more to this Top Gun Maverick toy line. So there are single carded versions of I think all of these and more. There's a mini aircraft carrier toy that actually looks kind of cool, <laughs> and something else, something like that launches in some way. Blackbird, cool. Parjai, yes. So that was one of the things that I was thinking of. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, there's a movie out there called Stealth. It's a little cheesy, but I love that movie. It's about it's it's about basically just what I described. It's the the near future. We've got human fighter pilots and these crazy uh, new fighter planes going up against drone basically an, an ai drone fighter that looks kind of like this yeah but this definitely reminded me of of that uh, there are there are designs in in robotech and macross there are um there's the ghost which is an again another ai driven uh hold on. Um, another AI fighter plane, essentially, in that one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Parjai, exactly. Like, I, I am, I am a fan of stealth. It, it has really silly moments to it, but that's fine. It doesn't. Ha Not every movie has to be Oscar bait. Yeah, it's great. Right, exactly. <laughs> Ruiner starring on Oscar winner Jamie Foxx. <laughs> and um, uh, what's the actress in that movie? I always forget her name. Who, like, sometimes seems really cool and does really interesting things like uh, like that Sinner, first series of the Sinner show. But then she talks about, like, anti-vax stuff. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you just could feel you. Anyway. So, I think this is a cool design. Well, it'll, it remains to be seen what the heck this is going to be in the movie. If it's even in the movie, who knows? But this stuff will go... Well, this will probably go... Hmm. So I just have to decide with this kind of stuff where it's going to go in my collection. I do have an area with real-world airplanes and jets. So these will probably go up there. Actually, I have a big, um, like, pre-built model Tomcat. I, I couldn't get to it this morning. <laughs> bunch of stuff in front of where I would need to climb up on a ladder to get it. Um, so this these things will definitely go up there. This will probably go in the more like sci-fi stuff area. It'll fit in there. Yeah, and it doesn't have any... There's a number on the back, but I don't know if that's like a part of the toy design or if that's just... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that number means. If if it'll be on the actual, and then there's just an ominous red dot. Because of course every every AI has to have an ominous red dot somewhere, or else it wouldn't be an ominous AI. So yeah, I think this set cost. I think it was about twenty bucks. No, I think it was less than that, actually. The prices for the individual jets, uh, even from what I've seen so far, vary drastically. It looks like the kind of thing where they're supposed to be under $10. I think, like, probably around 8 bucks, But um, because they're just on Amazon right now, I don't think any of these have actually been in, in stores. Although, I could be wrong. I certainly haven't seen any. But, um, you know, prices will vary depending on... The day, and if one seems to be, you know, slightly more rare, short packed than another. Cool. 
Yeah, I'll definitely be definitely be flying these around though. Hmm. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> I like it. Okay, what else? What else should we do today? Last week was it last week? Yeah, I think it was last week. Last week I opened up the Disney store or Disney exclusive because at the stores and their parks, but the sort of generic resistance X Wing, the T seventy, the this one that's mostly metal, very, very heavy. So I thought maybe we would check out some other versions. Because I have a few that are around. We can, it would be cool to line them up, get a good picture. I've opened up a bunch of these before on stream. So these are the Hot Wheels. So they're made by Mattel. They are also die cast. Mostly. Comes with a display stand. The original ones had these flying ones that you can use on your finger. And then they switched to something a little bit more standard after that. In this line, there have been multiple X-Wings. Uh, multiple T-70 X-Wings. Uh, X-Wings with S-Foils open, S-Foils closed. Pose version, the standard version. So this one, obviously, the S-Foils are closed. Uh, no, they don't move. This toy is it's actually a little bit better than I expected. Uh, the central part is is metal, and it's fairly heavy. That was my finger cracking on the toy. <laughs> uh, while these are rubber, because you know you might poke yourself in the eye. This part's actually metal all the way. That's so that's neat. That's nice. Oftentimes you'll have you'll have a metal toy and then like a silly rubber tip to it, but not in this case. Oh, man. Do we talk about the Independence Day sequel? I don't think we talk about that, right? So much potential. So many cool things they could have done. Obviously not so much in the paint department, which is sad because... As we often see, it's got a pretty good, it's got a pretty good sculpt. There are lots of panel lines and stuff going on. Just no, not much paint. To it's a nice little variation there. The the that little gray part within the blue. But yeah, again, especially holding it up to something that actually has a lot of detail, like these. Yeah, the different color, the color variations here. And around the engines, but yeah, you know, what are you gonna do on a small? Uh, in my opinion, now I haven't gone back and watched the original Independence Day in many, many years. I remember enjoying it. I remember thinking that it was. I don't know if I'd say like new and different in the in the world of science fiction, but I remember it being pretty good. Uh, the the sequel I thought was pretty bad. Pretty bad. But again, I mean that's that's just my that's just like my opinion, man. And I'm certainly open to hear other opinions. Uh, a line that I haven't done a lot of on stream. I've shown these a few times. So this is the Hasbro for a little while continued what they called the titanium line, but it's not what the titanium line was originally because those were actually really, really cool die cast heavy metal ships and then vehicles and they did a couple figures and things, but um, we tried to bring it back. Didn't really work out so well and this, this line did not continue very well, this, this sort of modern titanium line. But let's see what the X-Wing looks like in here. 
yeah, like I said, I, I'd be, it'd be interesting to watch the original Independence Day again. Yeah, just because like I don't, I, I'm yeah, it'd be interesting to see how well it holds up. But I think it probably would. But yeah, the the more recent one, I, I don't know. I just I I didn't like it so much. This has a whole bunch of little things I gotta cut off. All right, we've got a very plain base. <laughs> gotta watch out when I'm cutting, or I'll add some battle damage to the toy. Uh, yeah, Ruiner. So. Some movies I used to really enjoy are movies that feature Randy Quaid. And those are all... It's definitely a different feeling you get when you go back and rewatch those. Now this thing is... Right off the bat, it's super flimsy. The gimmick of the old, the old titanium line, again, was that it was like a lot of... Pandar, welcome. I saw you very briefly in Andy's stream last night. But, uh, yes, again, so the gimmick in these, the original titanium line was that they were die-cast metal. Like, titanium, they're metal, they're heavy. Uh, this one, just this central piece is metal. All of the wings <laughs> are plastic. Which also makes, it's really wobbly. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. All right. Well, Pandar, we all appreciated uh, seeing you pop in for just a moment. Now, it looks like... Okay, so it does have an opening cockpit, which is cool. <laughs> My kids are always very noisy. Like I tweeted about it, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, so it's got opening and closing cockpit, teeny, teeny, tiny... It has actual landing gear that folds out and in, which is pretty cool. So I love that feature. And then it even has deployable S foils, which even stay in place. Uh, okay, I'm impressed by that. Oftentimes, especially in a toy this little, you'll open those up and they'll just flop around. But, um,. They actually stick in place. That's kind of neat. Like I said, in, in the Hot Wheels line, there are different versions where they're closed and open. I don't know if there's a toy where you can move it yourself. I don't remember. I have a few of them around, but I, I don't remember one where you can actually do it yourself. All right, well, other than the fact that it's a little flimsy... There's some pretty cool, pretty cool features to this one. Uh, as far as paint, oh, <laughs> it's not terrible. It's a little drab. Obviously, we've got like the the lighter shades of blue, and then it does it is missing some painted areas like this section on the top. <clears throat> I like that it has the it has a little bit of a transparent. Uh, canopy. It's hard to see. Um, so that, that's kind of neat. Although there's nothing inside. There's what almost looks like a seat back there. It's just in black plastic. But anyway. Alright, that's cool. I don't like how flimsy it is with the, the S-foils closed. But otherwise... Otherwise, it's not bad. And then again, it has landing gear and it comes with a stand, so I got to give it extra points for that. Oh, I should put the other one on that stand. Okay. And then, of course, micro machines. You know them, you love them. Force Awakens Micro Machines. I bought a whole bunch of these things. I could open these things for days. Uh, these were the smallest packs, just the little three ship or three 
vehicle pack. Well, actually, that's not true. They did also, when these were coming out, they had single blind bagged micro machine packs that were mostly spaceships, some vehicles, and even a couple of character figures. Um, almost like the the blind bag sets that are at um, Disneyland, probably Disney World. They've had a million of those over the years where, again, it's like it's a little blind bag and then inside you get like some vehicle or I mean, for the Disney ones, it could they have different a bunch of different series. So some of them are characters, some of them are vehicles, some of them are actually like uh, depictions of ride cars and things from the parks. Uh, some of them are actual buildings and things. They're neat. But yeah, these uh, micro machines for Force Awakens, and then they did a couple of them for prequels, the original movies, and then some of the cartoons. They had three packs, and then the the larger, which were what like ten pieces. Yeah, real world loot boxes. So we've got first order. TIE Fighter, pretty standard. Not the Special Forces version with the extra beefy parts and the red stripes. So this is just the regular version. Again, all the modern Micro Machines, they do have the hole for a stand, even though none of them come with stands. A little bit frustrating, but what are you going to do? I do have lots of old stands. Uh, we've got our familiar blue and white resistance X-Wing in attack formation, barely. Man, look at those. Each one of these points in a different direction. That's fun. They're, ugh. Look at that plastic. It's all over the place. Oh, well. It's small. And then Poe Dameron's specific... Uh, was it? Black Leader... And this one, interestingly, so the S foils are open and it has battle damage. So it's, oh, come on. Just like my, my stream, it is scuffed. Looks pretty cool. This color scheme with the black and orange, it, um, it looks really good on toys, <laughs> I will say. I have a variety of... Yeah, shooting straight. Why shoot straight? Some of these X-Wings could shoot around corners, practically. Oh, I should have gotten out of stand. So there we have the same X-Wing design. In four different toy lines. Technically, these are from the same company, but what are you going to do? Pretty, actually, because I was I was interested to see if any of these would be wildly out of proportion. Now, the one that's most out of proportion is this one. As far as, like, the, the length of the fuselage compared to the width and, like, the chunkiness of it, that's definitely the most, like, kidified of them. But even so, it's not, it's not super terrible. Yeah, like these are really chunky. But, you know, not too bad. I forget sometimes on the 70 how the, there are these little swoopy parts. Did I say I should have gotten absent? Did I say that? I don't know. I'm very tired. I might have said that. Am I, am I, am I not speaking clearly? It's possible. I'm just drinking water. I'm trying to stay awake.
Well, there you have a trip down memory lane for the Resistance X-Wing. It's also kind of a bummer that they didn't really pick out the droid on any of these little ones. I mean, yeah, this one has... It's sort of like a gray dot for the droid. Amidst that little black section. But, I mean, would it have... Would it kill them to just do a, a little a little dot of some other color to show that, that droid in there? This one, again, it's like a little... A tiny bit of gray paint, but nothing, nothing really special. And then, of course nothing doing on the on the little one it's sculpted a little sculpted dome but no no paint on it i wish in the in those movies the sequel movies we would have seen more bb series droids obviously in force awakens they were still creating the actual technology to have this thing be a physical thing that could roll around on set which they had to some degree they were sort of figuring it out, uh, figuring it out as they went so i think most of the bb8 shots in the in force awakens it was still on a on a stick that was off camera but it just seemed like it seemed like the movie was trying to tell us that hey BB series droids are out there and everybody knows them but we only ever see one of them yeah that kind of that kind of bugged me I mean you go back and watch original Star Wars and even from you know on Tatooine we see a bunch of different droids like it it immediately shows us that yeah they're droids they're all they're all around they're not they're not unique yeah the tennis ball BB-8 has grown on me over the years. I'm an old man, so of course I saw it and was like, "What? what is this? This is ridiculous. But it's fine. What are you going to do? We need new droid designs for kids. <laughs> exactly, there it is. There, there must be at least eight. Yeah, it, it's, they're, they're fine. I do like how in the, in the Last Jedi they made... Like the evil version, the the black and silver imperial version that's a little bit more squared off. Because, you know, you can't have an evil round thing. Hey, Fadir, exactly. And we talked about this before with, um, w why is this called an X-Wing if they don't have the same letters as we do? Yeah. It... Questions that are only for... For George, that's true. Nerdy Doc, that, right? I mean, BB-8 could have been the, the first one that actually that, that actually rolled. All the previous ones were just failed experiments. Hey, Tiny Chris, welcome. BB-8. Oh, I like that Pandar. BBX. Oh, I, yeah. I, I don't know what the other uh, the designation was. So we've got X wings. We've got. Tomcats. Move those over there. Man, looking at these, I do, I do have some regrets, ragrets, if you prefer, uh, about not getting the Comic Con, Comic Con exclusive, Top Gun Maverick, Tomcat Transformer, from last year. It was like ten dollars too much. I think it was fifty bucks, and it's like, eh, I'm I'm not doing that. But I I do uh, regret it just a little bit. And it did come with a volleyball. Because, oh, Parjay, you have it. Okay, well, all right, thank you. I I appreciate that. Even if you're just lying to me to make me feel better. I do like Tomcat stuff, so it it did look it looked cool in that mode. I, I don't know if I would ever transform it into uh, into its robot maverick mode, but um, yeah. Let's uh, 
Let's see. Let's look at something. Let's do something silly. Yeah, Parjay, that's what it looked like. But usually when I buy a Transformer, even before I've opened it or brought it home, I know what mode it's going to stay in forever and then just go on my shelf. And, you know, probably... Oops, sorry, I kicked the camera stand. I mean, again, I don't have I don't have that many of my Transformers actually out, but I'd say it's probably about even how many the Transformers that I have that I that I want to be in robot mode forever or that I want to be in alt mode forever. And it just depends on the specific one. Ten dollars is too many. Yeah, the story of Cursed City. Oof. Yeah. Uh, my Little Pony. I have many more of these to open. So in the future, we might have entire Toy Tuesdays that are just My Little Pony. Continuing with the series of Nightmare Night, where everybody dresses up, it's sort of like their Halloween. This is the mayor. Even the mayor gets in on the fun. Mayor, mayor. Again, at first glance, you might think that this is Pinkie Pie, but it's not. It's mayor, mayor. You can see her cutie mark is like a like a, a scroll, sure something. She was meant to be in government. <laughs> Pandar, you are absolutely correct. I'm just I'm just saying that for all the for all of you casuals out there. A proclamation, yeah, tiny Chris, that would work. It reminds me of like the the uh, the bill from the old uh, what's it called cartoon. Oh, does she not stand? That's a bummer. Oh, oh, okay. I can get her to stand. Oh, Parjay, that would be interesting. Yeah, to repaint it. Ooh, repaint it as a, as a Robotech, Veritech. <laughs> Panda, it's like uh, My Little Pony Inception. So yeah, now it looks like, so the hair or the wig is attached. The little tail puff is attached. The shirt is removable, but I will leave it on for modesty's sake. Uh, and then the little disguise is also attached. Because on some of these, there are removable parts. Clothing, usually, and accessories. But um, it's just the shirt on this one that's removable. So yes, Mayor Mayor is usually... She's usually a, a little on the stuffy side. But uh, here, showing off her more fun side. Uh, there is a company out there called Caliber Wings. That they make relatively high-end um, reproductions of jets and other things. And they've done... And they did a line of... They got the Robotech license from Harmony Gold. And they did a line of F-14 Tomcats in Robotech colors. So there's one of Rick Hunter's VF-1J in white with the red stripes. They did the... 1Js for both Miria and Max, so in red and in blue, and then the VF1S in white with black and yellow details. Uh, and they look awesome. I don't have any of them. Again, they're a little bit more expensive than I'd than I'd like, uh, but they look really, really cool. And they they the wings move. They've got you know a bunch of. I think they have little tiny pilots that come with them. Uh, and then Caliber Wings has also started making actual uh, VF1s as well. So you can get your accurate ones or a Tomcat in <laughs> dressed up as, as Veritex, which I thought was a pretty neat idea. Yeah, I think I think those were... were they, they were 100-something a piece? I can't remember. Uh, I think it's Caliber, C-A-L-I-B-R-E. But yes, Caliber Wings. Uh, 
In My Little Pony. So there's the Apple family, and there are a ton of Apple-related characters. Apple Strudel. Granny Smith. Basically, like, every every real-world real variety of Apple, there's a character named after that. Big Mac, Macintosh. Apple Bloom. There's a lot. And then there's also the Peach family. Rivals, but also friends. Friendly rivals, you might call them. Uh, all the different peach varieties and peach uh, related desserts are all of their names. Oh, I tried to do a new emote, but I don't know if it worked. I tried to do this geek one. It kind of works. It looks better on the when it pops up on the screen than it does in chat. Because it has dots. Yeah, it looks cool on the emote wall. In chat, it's a little bit hard to tell what it is. Eh, maybe I'll try to redo it again. I had a wild hair. I think it looks cool on the emo wall, at least. Eh. I swapped out the baby. Because, I mean, how often are you going to use a super superhero baby emote? It was cute, but you got to change things up every once in a while, right? <laughs> I love the bandana one. <laughs> the bandana uh, modify emote is so great. They got rid of, if you were a fan of the uh, St. Patrick's Day related stuff with the the, the beard and the, uh, the little hat, I think those are gone now. Can I do, I guess I can modify my own. I have infinite channel points. That's handy. So why does it even tell me why? <laughs> Goofy. Channel points are silly. There we go. Boom. Look at that. <laughs> That's great. I was trolling Andy with this one last night. Some of them look better than others, but that one was pretty funny. Yeah, we do have that new, the new hype Valkyrie, courtesy of Darrow. Thank you so much. Try to keep it new and fresh. Swap things out every so often. Who knows? The baby might come back one day. Well, I mean, I guess I could add it as a tier two emote. And if you really want it, you got to go for that. You never know. You never, never know. Um... So let's see. I've got more My Little Pony stuff, but I'll save it. I'll save it for another time. Like I said, I have more of the the ponies in dress up. It did cool. I mean, look, look at that. Look at that reference to uh, Bride of Frankenstein. There, pretty cool vampire stuff. Yeah, there you go, Aaron. Um, there's Pinkie Pie in a silly costume. And then I have a couple of My Little Pony multi-packs. I gotta tell you, especially for these small-scale toys, whether it's My Little Pony or Micro Machines or, or you know, some other, like I said, small-scale things, multi-packs are just, oh, they're so great. So this is a Toys R Us exclusive. Like I said, I'm not gonna open it today. I'll open up on a future uh, show, but these are so cool. This one, you get the main six... Ponies with, let's say, challenging characters. They're not all necessarily uh, villains, but um, challenging. 
Yeah, so you get the, the griffin, you get the manticore. Cool. Tells you all their names on the back. I love packs like this. This is good stuff. I have another one of these. Yes, in the, in the donkey. Uh, I have another multi-pack like this of all of the the Wonder Bolts. So rather, it's some Wonder Bolts and then other um, uh, flying Pegasus related things. Yeah, the it, it's a, so technically it's a special edition Guild of the Griffin and the Manticore. But I already have, I already have a, both of these. But I, maybe they came out after this pack. Who knows? Who knows? It doesn't matter. It's all good. So let's see. Today is Tuesday, which means it is also Dune's Day. So tune in. On the Jessica Nerdy channel today at 5 p.m. Pacific, P-D-T. Don't forget, you got to get that D. Uh, P-D-T for Dune, or whatever shenanigans we get up to. Is, is that Eeyore? Uh, no, it, it's not Eeyore. It... Cranky Doodle is this character's name. He's bald, that is a toupee. There's a whole lot of lore with Cranky Doodle. We'll, we'll talk about that in a future episode. I can't even begin to start all of that right now. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Dune today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, we will start looking at... Oh, where is it? It's here somewhere. Tomorrow, we'll start looking at the night. We'll go through all the sprues that are in here. See how we start working on that thing. I believe, I, I assume we build the skeleton, the inner skeleton first. And I've been told, build that skeleton. Don't put the armor on because uh, once you put the armor on, it's very difficult to get in between the armor panels to get to and paint that skeleton. The skeletal structure, at least. Uh, we'll talk about that. And yeah, so that'll be tomorrow for Warhammer Wednesday. And then again, tomorrow afternoon... Myths and Video Games with Pete Wiz is back. Super excited for that. And Friday, who knows? We'll do some do something fun on Friday. Um, a little a little bit of a shorter stream because, like I said, I'm I'm just exhausted. Very little sleep last night, thanks to the little babies. Um. Do we want to raid anyone? I don't know. Oh man. Oh my god. Tired. Uh-oh. No, thank you. Uh-oh. Something's happening. Doesn't sound good. Um Oh no. The little one is going after the cat. <laughs> oh, Aridan's cat. I wish. Man, I have so much stuff to do today. <laughs> So all right yeah i'm gonna get going too uh thanks everybody for hanging out yeah i don't know he was doing something to the cat but i didn't hear screaming so he must not have bothered the cat too much because she'll let you know if you're bothering her too much uh all right have a great day everybody hopefully i'll see you later for dune maybe i can get some rest before then anything exciting no, I, I i don't i don't know what's what's going on over there um, yeah, cool. Uh, so this was fun. Top Gun, X-Wing, Mayor Mayor. And, uh, I'll see everybody later. Hopefully, hopefully I, like I said, for Doomsday this afternoon. Uh, I'm not raiding, so go be free, have fun. See everybody later. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.